cruisers. When they do hit you in the rock and the mall and the tackle, they, they do hit it harder than people in the Northern Hemisphere. Off the field, we'll also show you the lighter side of a Lions tour. Is that six? Today, the Lions face the New Zealand Maori. They promise a traditional rugby welcome. Good afternoon and welcome to Wellington. For the third match of their tour of New Zealand, the Lions have flown down from the north of the North Island to the capital, Windy Wellington. After opening up in Fongere last Saturday, the Lions have been working their way steadily south. At North Harbour in Auckland on Wednesday, they've now touched down for the first time at Wellington. Wellington's current marketing slogan is absolutely, positively Wellington, but it also goes by the title of City of a Thousand Views. The magnificent natural harbour first attracted Polynesian settlers in ancient times. But it wasn't inhabited by Europeans until the early 19th century. Wellington was chosen to be the seat of government ahead of the larger Auckland because of its central location. A thriving commercial centre in its own right, Wellington is reckoned by the 300,000 or so inhabitants to be New Zealand's scenic capital as well. This is the Pipitea Marae, the largest Maori meeting place in Wellington. And it's in Wellington that the Lions will take on the New Zealand Maori later this afternoon. We've also got highlights of the controversial match on Wednesday against North Harbour. But first, another glimpse of life with the Lions. Last week we saw them clay pigeon shooting, this week they went back to school. It's 8.30 in the morning and the Lions mustn't be late for assembly. All of the party have been adopted by schools in Auckland's North Harbour. The pupils will compile a scrapbook on their adopted lions. In return, the players must pay them a visit between breakfast and training. Centre Jeremy Guscott and coach Ian McGeekin have by special request been adopted by a girls' school. Hello. Nice to meet you. Hi. Thank you very much. And we feel pleased and very honoured to have two respected members of the British Isles Lion Rugby Touring Team. Mr. Ian McGeehan and Mr. Jeremy Gascott. We feel especially gratified to have with us... Mr. Once they'd Ian cornered McGeehan. their lions, the Carmel School girls came straight to the point. Are you scared of the hacker? I don't think I'm really scared of it, but it seems to work for them. It, it gets their adrenaline going and it, and it really gets them ready for the game. Um, but no, I'm, I'm not really frightened of it. <laughs> um, Jeremy, we, um, it's been mentioned in the press that you do modelling. <laughs> <laughs> Do you consider that as, um, would, would you rate rugby higher or do you like modelling as a career? <laughs> <laughs> the modelling is fun. Is uh, I think some of the guys in the teams are, are a bit envious of me because most of the time it, I seem to be alongside really beautiful, attractive women, which <laughs> most of the guys would like. But uh, no, rugby definitely comes first. But Guscott and McGeekin had to prove that they weren't all talk. After passing on a few coaching tips, they became embroiled in a highly competitive game of touch rugby and were clearly impressed by the standard. A lot of the, the young girls here have got a lot more skill, I would say, than uh, a lot of our young lads back in England. And I, I think <laughs> the way they, their knowledge about the game, I'm sure they can uh, teach a few of the old boys in the terraces a, a thing or two about rugby. Well, one thing's for sure, those Auckland school children will have plenty to put in their Lions scrapbook after Wednesday's highly charged win over their local team. Highlights of that game and today's match against the New Zealand Maori coming up. Don't go away. Don't miss a and &E Aquatic's two-week summer madness. Save 50% off selected pom pumps. UV lights from only £39.95 at a and &E Aquatic's. Pom liners from only 18 pence per square foot. And save 20% off all cold water, tropical and marine fish. And save 10% off all cabinets and tanks at a and &E Aquatic's. Rounds Green Road, Albury. Thanks to Hewlett-Packard's range of affordable 
black and white and color desk jet printers. Everyone can improve their image. Desk jet printers from Hewlett Packard. When it comes to the acid test, Andrew's antacid tablets help relieve heartburn, acid indigestion, and trap wind. Suck them and see. Halford's Bank Holiday Specials now on. Castrol GTX just $6.99. All Haynes manuals £2 off. All chamois 20% off. This rear cycle carrier save £10. Trade in your old bike, save up to £50 on a selection of great new bikes. All at Halford's now. Open your eyes to a different kind of car. Stretch your imagination to espace versatility. Turn your thoughts to espace innovation. Broaden your vision to the Renault Espace. all for garden furniture this spring. These 10-piece garden party sets are £87.20 for this weekend only. These 5-piece garden sets are just £27.95 and parasol sets with matching seat pads are only £29.99. You can get these hardwood steamer chairs for just £169. Paradise 7 position relaxers are only £29.99 and in most newspapers there's a voucher worth £5 off for every £30 you spend. Do it all. Better products, better prices. Right card with double protection. It works hardest when you need it most. This man has AXA Equity and Law life assurance. If anything happens to him, his wife will be a rich woman. I wonder who that was. AXA Equity and Law. Need we say more? Why pay more for tyres when QuickFit are offering new steel radials from just eighteen ninety five? And why not save even more by fitting two new tyres? Can you afford to go anywhere else? A very warm welcome back to Wellington. Still to come this afternoon's match at the Athletic Park between the New Zealand Maori and the British Lions. But first on the bill, Wednesday's confrontation with North Harbour. The North Harbour team containing seven full All Blacks, including number eight and skipper Richard Turner, the current scrum half Ant Strawn, and the highly rated centre pair of Frank Bunce and Walter Little. The Lions give a first outing on tour to 14 of their players, the exception being skipper Gavin Hastings, who came on as a replacement in the opening match against North Auckland. He's got two other international captains in the ranks, Welsh wing Yian Evans and English centre Will Carling. Alongside me in the commentary box on Wednesday was the current Lion, Stuart Barnes. We now join the match after eight minutes. Mill. Taken in the middle by Bayfield. Important win in the line-out for the Lions. And driving it round into the midfield. Now they want it, they have it through Morris. Winderbottom goes in again. Back it comes. Andrew kicking for position. Forcing Kappa to go back. And a good touch from Rob Andrew. That was excellent play there. The forward set that up really well and uh, gave Rob time to fire a lovely kick into the corner. Take a line, take a line. The Lions' best attacking position, Dowd with a throw-in for North Harbour. Stolen by the Lions this time. Morris digs it out. Andrew, the drop goal attempt, charged down. And away to the right-hand side of the post. And disappointment for the Lions. Good strike from the Lions this time. Rob Andrew. Forced to run across to take that. This is Underwood. Hastings now. Gavin Hastings looks up for support inside. Andrew on the way round and the try from Rob Andrew. Yeah, 
Ward did very well there, and here's Tony coming off a win, which we're working on the blind side. Gavin Strong, uh, North Harbour missing the tackles this time. Bit of a lucky ricochet, but Rob supporting, that's, that's a great start for us. Yes, the move looked as though it was coming to nothing as Underwood came in from that blind side, but Gavin Hastings, strong, straight running, made the dent. The ball ricocheted and supporting, as he should be, Rob Andrew. Ten minutes gone, the Lions leading 5-0. Gavin Hastings with the conversion attempt straight through the middle an important kick for the Lions they lead by seven points to nil we've had ten minutes of this match one in the middle this time by North Harbour and the Lions penalised they're going over the top John Carter with the chance to put points on the board for North Harbour. Strikes it well. That's good enough. <laughs> Nearly 14 minutes of the match gone. North Harbour on the board. North Harbour 3, British Lions 7. The North Harbour throw. Well taken by Strawn. The home side penalised this time. Free kick to the Lions. Morris. Andrew. Teague. Well, that was a crunching tackle from Frank Bunt, but Teague stood up in it. This is Carling. Andrew beats Gibbs. Ryan Evans now stepping inside. One quick ball now. Carling's playing at scrum half. This is Gibbs. And on the outside now, Tony Underwood. Tony Underwood dribbles and kicks on. Tony Underwood with the chase. And the try from Tony Underwood. Good continuity again, ball left to right, a couple of cutouts, and Tony there, that's pure class. Uh, Eric Rush is a new winger, and you can see there, Tony, Tony turned the burners on, and uh, never in doubt there, that's great play by Tony Underwood. Good pass on from Gavin Hastings, but Tony Underwood showing the inside, then the outside to Eric Rush, converted from flanker, and that won't be one of his happier memories. Hastings, the big thump, but not successful this time. 18 minutes gone, the Lions leading by 12 points to three. Change! Change! Just over six minutes to go to half-time. This time, the free kick awarded to the Lions. to Andrew Andrew feeds the ball inside to Richards and Gavin Hastings Morris Andrew Carling's long pass Gibbs feeds to T Winterbottom's in there as well and North Harbour penalised for offside but that should be an easy kickable penalty for the Lions well, that was a super piece of play there by Scott Gibbs. Lovely hands, uh, but you could see the speed they were up. Uh, it was pretty clear there was a yard or two in that one, and that's a correct penalty. Yeah. And just five and a half minutes before half-time, Gavin Hastings makes no mistake with that penalty. The Lions leading by 15 points to three. Everybody in the stadium knows how vital a score would be at this stage for North Harbour, and more so than the Lions as North Harbour 
try to attack through Bruntz. This is Calder, the full-back. Gibbs goes back. Gibbs in trouble from Calder. Kappa's in there. Gibbs forced to carry it over his own line. And desperate defence for the Lions. I thought the half-time whistle would be ideal now. Somehow I didn't think it'd be half-time. Gibbs caught in two minds there and eventually forced over his own line. Good scrum from North Harbour. Carter on the loop again. Carter, good defensive tackle in the middle though by Scott Gibbs. The Lions steal it. Come away with the ball. Uh, Penalised yet again. Just when it seemed that the Lions had done the hard work, they conceded a penalty. Yeah, some, some good attack in there. Scott Gibbs is in with a magnificent tackle there. Stops him in his tracks, and uh, I don't know what, what it's for. It might be playing on the ground, but it just seems a little bit obscure, that decision, Alistair. Carter doesn't miss from that range. That's the half-time whistle. British Lions 15, North Harbour 6. <laughs> Lions win that line out. Popperwell so strong. Sets it up. And Morris now back to Andrew. Gibbs to Gavin Hastings. Good loop from Gibbs now. Tony Underwood. Tony Underwood through the middle. And again, he keeps going outside the tackle. Eventually brought down, but the Lions want quick ball now. There's men over there, but Andrews dropped it. And that really looked as though there was a score on there, Stuart. Yeah, Tony's looking razor sharp. Uh, they'll be disappointed with their tackling there, but we had the opportunity, just unfortunate there, but... Tony's just cutting the angles and uh, the strength as well as pace there. They underestimate how strong he is. Good tackle by Bunts, but uh, again, Winters is in really quickly there. We go in the same way, and uh, you know, possibly then, if Robert held that, Yarn was uh, in the corner. Pity about that. Lovely play by Tony, though. side is Gavin Hastings again meant for Evans again he catches it Will Carling Winterbottom's in there again Burnell out to Morris Andrews lovely pass finds Gibbs lays it back for Bayfield the Lions desperate to get it out now Morris is jersey tucked by Larson back it comes Teague's there and a thump from David Mayhew on Paul Burnell. And trouble brewing at that one. I think it's welcome to New Zealand now, Alistair. Yeah, that came from good, good pressure by our players and Mayhew. Uh, Players still getting at each other, Winterbottom is being held there. Turner, the North Harbour captain, tries to cool things down, so does Martin Bayfield. And the referee and touch judge on the far side of the field conferring. Richard Webster, the reserve flanker, prepares to strip off. And it was Dean Richards, the man who was felled. Dean Richards, in fact, walks off the field. The referee speaking to both captains, Kevin Hastings and Richard Turner. Let's see if we can see what happened there. The Lions piled in. Max overuse of the feet by Bonnell. Richards comes in. That looks a bit of a stamp too. Let's look at this player coming in from this side. 
Popperwell and Mayhew, and look at that punch from Mayhew. Pick up from Turner, Straw, Calder, rush on the burst. Webster's in there with a the tackle, untidy ball for North Harbour. Carter recovers, Little, Walter Little aims to go outside, cuts back, streaks across the field. There could be a man over here, this is the fullback Calder. Calder has inside him Barry, but what a tackle by Dowie Morris. Back go the Lions, but this is Graham Dowd for North Harbour. Drawn again, there's men over on the far side if they can make it out there. Along with the, the line and the score for Paralini. That's, that's good play by North Harbour and, uh, you know, it shows we've got to close that space down. That was the tackle back there from Dowie Morris, who looked to have saved the day, but in the end, North Harbour had so many extra men over. Dowd committed a few more, then the long passes, and Perolini didn't need Kappa outside him for the try. Carter's kick this time makes no mistake, and that's narrowed the gap right down to two points. 16 minutes left in this match. Penalty at last awarded to the Lions. And Gavin Hastings will kick, uh, kick a goal. Hastings eyes up the target, strikes it well but gets underneath it. Carter has it for North Harbour. He's not found touch, he's found Winterbottom instead. Now, Peter Winterbottom gets the support from Webster. The Lions drive on, this is Winterbottom again. Andrew, the floated pass, then outside, there's Hastings, and outside him is Yian Evans. Yian Evans for the corner and the score for the British Lions. That's an excellent score, that's wonderful play, Winter's taken on, it's a good ball from Rob there, Scott Gibbs depth to two on one and Yian Evans is one of the quickest rugby and uh, wingers in the Northern Hemisphere and there's no way Turner's getting to him, that's marvellous, Gavin can kick this one now, uh, we could well be home. Gavin Hastings this time, yes it is over! And that restores the nine-point lead for the Lions with just six and a half minutes left of this match. <laughs> Holding it up in the midfield. And again it comes out from Webster. There may be a man over here on the far side, Gibbs to Ian Evans. Webster's in there again. The Welshmen working well together. Morris gets it out again. Andrew's long pass. Stepping back inside is Hastings, Andrew doubles back. The Lions still have it, Hastings again. And that's sliding into touch. A good kick from the captain, just a minute and a half to go. Dowd throws long, aim for Rush. The Lions though pick it up in the midfield through Winterbottom. Webster. Webster goes over the line and scores, what power from Richard Webster, the replacement. Well, I think that's going to spell trouble for Takapuna tonight, Richard's a lively character, he's going to be delighted with that one, because that's really sealed it for us. Again, I think all afternoon we picked up the scavenging balls, Peter Winterbottom there again, and uh, the forwards have been direct, controlled and together, and I think that try encapsulates the way our pack has performed today and uh, by the 10 minute spell where there was a lot of sort of uh, aggression I think overall it's, it's been an excellent performance and uh, I think one the whole squad will be pleased with.
and the Young Hastings conversion extends the Lions lead out to 29 points. Of course, the main talking point throughout New Zealand this week has been that extraordinary brawl just after half-time. It was an incident that reflected credit on neither side. John Taylor reports. The brawl happened at a crucial point when the Lions were desperate to reassert their authority after letting North Harbour back into the game. If they'd won the second ruck here under the posts, they had a clear overlap and would surely have scored. After Martin Bayfield is tackled, number 13, Frank Bunce, a wily old campaigner, does all he can to stop the ball emerging. Number 18, Richards, takes the law into his own boots as he tries to free the ball, and as a result, Bunce needed 12 stitches in the head wing. The incident looked as if it had finished for a moment. But then the North Harbour forwards weighed in determined to take retribution. If Richards is not too proud of his role on reflection, then neither will be the local captain, Richard Turner, in the bottom right of frame, who attacks Richards on the ground. The Lions claim there have been plenty of earlier provocation. The blackened eyes of prop Paul Burnell came from a series of blows and all around the dressing room there was other evidence of a hard day at the office. Paul, it was very much a question of welcome to New Zealand, wasn't it? Yeah, that's right. I think uh, we were... <laughs> I think that was a real good welcome for the, uh, for, the, for the guys who played today, the first match in a few weeks, yeah. Looking a bit bashed around the eyes, was that the result of the punch-up or was it a general thing throughout the game? I think it was a fairly physical game and everybody's got a few bumps and bruises. It's just what you expect when you play a game of rugby. After a statement issued through the New Zealand Rugby Union in which both camps accepted that the sort of violence we saw at Mount Smart was deplorable and unacceptable, the incident is officially closed. Well, I think it's just an unfortunate incident, John. I don't think it reflected the game uh, in particular. And uh, I think everybody involved uh, now thinks that that's, that should be it and uh, there's no reason why anything like that should be, should be repeated. Former New Zealand captain turned politician David Kirk also believes the incident should not be blown out of proportion. Yeah. I mean, it's got not at all, not at all. And uh, neither, no, none of the players that were involved nor the management uh, are, any, are concerned about uh, that, that flare-up. Uh, I don't think it'll be the last one, but uh, nor do I think there'll be any, in any sense a kind of orchestrated uh, over-physical approach by New Zealand teams. The game's played at such pace now, there's no time for that. Well, let's hope that he's right. It's here at the Athletic Park in Wellington that we'll discover whether any lessons have been learned from Wednesday at North Harbour. The Lions opponents, the only non-provincial side they'll be facing throughout this tour, the New Zealand Maori. <laughs> The haka is the world-famous symbol of New Zealand's proud Maori heritage. The ancient war dance is at once a challenge and a greeting. In the cosmopolitan community that is New Zealand, just under a tenth of the three million population is pure Maori. But over half have some Maori blood in their veins. Even in the crowded cities, there are powerful reminders of a proud history. In the marae or meeting places, the old traditions are kept alive. But one of the biggest unifying factors for the Maori is sport. Rugby in particular has become a way of expressing their identity. The natural Maori player has a, a tremendous amount of skill, has a, a tremendous amount of flair and ability. And if they will go out and use that flair and that natural ability and, and add to that some of the other things that uh, should be there, you know, in the set patterns and forms of play, they could be absolutely tremendous. Those who represent the New Zealand Maori are proud of their place in all-black rugby. 
The first ever touring team that left New Zealand was a Maori team. They called it a native team. And, uh, you know, we've been playing rugby ever since it got here. And it's, uh, it's uh, I know the Polynesians like playing it, you know, this why Western Samoa is coming up, the Fijians, of course. And uh, I don't know, it's just a way to express yourself. I think people like running with the ball. The Lions need no reminding that rugby in New Zealand is a battle. This is a face-to-face -face challenge. Well, the Lions may be on a high after two wins in two matches, but so is our commentary position here at the Athletic Park in Wellington. Have a look down there. Let's hope our guest Lion has a head for heights this afternoon. Behind the microphone with John Taylor in the commentary box will be English winger Tony Underwood. We've got you the best seat in the house, then. Yeah, looking forward to watching it. I mean, it can't get better than this. Uh... Uh, so to check left me where I'm going because it was scary down there, but yeah, looking forward to the game. What, what about morale in the party? Good. Um, two good wins behind us, and uh, especially uh, the win on Wednesday against North Harbour, which is a uh, you know, good win for us, and we'll be hoping to continue the momentum to uh, you know, today's game. John Taylor, this afternoon's opposition, the New Zealand Maori, what about them? They're going to be really tough because they treat this as an international. It is very definitely the New Zealand Maori's national side, and uh, they've got five All Blacks in the forwards. They can really turn it on, and if they sort of relax and start to get into their fiery, unconventional style of rugby, they could cause some real problems. Well, whilst John Taylor and Tony Underwood focus their binoculars and take some seasick tablets, we're going to take a short break now. Uh, coming up, we've got a competition designed to win you the chance of coming to join us in the first test at Christchurch and, of course, the British Lions against the New Zealand Maori. Don't go away. Shredded wheat is 100% whole wheat. It's just basic bran fiber. It's a good source of carbohydrates. And yet, there's no added salt or sugar. Shredded wheat is what the big boys get up for. That's what the big boys eat. Shredded wheat and shredded wheat bite size. The new R1100 RS. Available in 83 different sizes. Personalized ergonomics from BMW. You've probably never seen the Roubettes live, have you, Wallace? No, sir. What an echoing void your life must be. The game's afoot, Wallace. The cleaner found the front door open, the professor's missing, and so is the Rubens. He took the piano. The painting, sir, on loan from the college. <laughs> well, you went to see our professor again. I think you will, sir. <laughs> Last number he dialed was 081 203000. Doesn't ring a bell, Wallace. <laughs> He's asked for details about the new BT share offer. That was months ago, Wallace. The government kept some shares back, sir. You can register for information now. Let's move, then. You can start by bringing in the accomplice, sir. The cleaner, Wallace. Sir? The BT3 share offer. It could be worth investigating. Register for information on 081 200 3000 or with a share shop. Talk amongst yourselves. I may be some time. NatWest Saturday branches are now open 9.30 to 3.30 with a counter service, giving you more time to do what you want. <laughs> 